Hi, Calvin. My name is Michaela. I study at University of York. I study global marketing, so I'm in my master's degree. Um, I'm originally from Bulgaria, and um, I came to do my bachelor's in the UK in 2014. So I studied tourism management in Bournemouth University. Okay. So if we go first to your undergrad at Bournemouth University, why did you choose your course? So um, I've always been very interested in um, management as well as traveling. So I thought the best way to combine the two would be to go into tourism management. Um, so after some careful research about uh, what university options I, I have in the UK, um, I was kind of, I was impressed by what university, Bournemouth University was offering. Uh, and that's why I chose this specific course. You've now finished the course, which is a three or four year course. It was a four year course. Uh, it had a compulsory placement year. What have you thought of the course? It was definitely very well structured throughout and it was giving students the opportunity to uh, choose their modules, what they were studying um, and go into the direction they wanted. Uh, and also I think it's a good idea to have a placement year because it really prepares you for what's out there for you, what's waiting for you out there after you graduate. And whether that's um, um, something that you're really interested in that you do during your placement or not, I think it's still a very valuable experience even after you graduate. If we now go into your masters, why did you choose your course? Um, after I finished my bachelor's degree, I worked at Bournemouth University actually for, for two years in, in a full time, on a full-time role. And um, my role kind of consisted of, of um, supporting students go abroad to do study or work abroad. And um, I was kind of liaising, if you like, with um, universities and partners globally. So in order to promote uh, the, the kind of courses and programs that students could get involved in, I needed to do some market research, um, get to learn what the trends are and be able to effectively promote them to students. So that sparked my interest about marketing, uh, especially global marketing was also related to my role. So um, the, the course really fitted into what I was looking for. You're now, it's now December, so you're a couple months into your course. What have you thought of your course so far? I, I must admit I was a bit surprised because, I mean, it was expected that there will be some changes in um, the usual circumstances due to pan the pandemic. Mm -hmm. But um, really late in August, they made some crucial changes to the programme. So some of the modules that were advertised on the website of the course um, uh, were actually changed uh, and we were informed by email about this. Um, we didn't really, I mean, we had a choice. You could still go on and do your course. Um, and then you could also choose if you could do it in September, start from September or from January. Um, but if you still, if you check on the website now, my course, they still haven't made these changes about the modules. So um, that was a little bit of a shock when you when you started the course but it was a warm welcome in general to the whole um, university okay so if we now go into your undergrad what you come you said you come from bulgaria so what subjects slash interests did you need to study while in bulgaria for your course um so did you study I sorry Yes, I, uh, when I attended the, the event that I told you about, that I, I saw the rep Bournemouth University representative. Did you mention the event again, sorry? Yeah, so uh, I attended an event by an international agency here in the UK, in, um, in Bulgaria, uh, which, was, um, which had representatives from different universities there. So I met um, a lady from Bournemouth University and I had a brief chat with her about uh, any requirements that were specifically for my course and any um, 
as subjects that I needed for, for the application. She said it was fine uh, if I just had my language exams, but I've always, my personal interests have always lied in actually languages, um, history and um, uh, <laughs> PE. <laughs> um, I'm a very active person. And uh, I think it's actually quite helped me <laughs> in one way or another with my course and my time at university in general. Okay. And if you were to talk to Bulgarian slash English UK students, what do you think the best A levels slash subjects are for your course? I think definitely business. Okay. It's going to give some, I suppose, general perspective of what to expect when coming to study a more business. Uh, kind of degree but I, I think it's any kind of degree and also um, the whole environment surrounding university because I think university and higher education now is kind of unfortunately going into a more um, financial direction uh, where uh, they're just trying to guess uh, I guess um, use not use but um attract more students because uh there's a couple of big events as we know brexit mm. and pandemic that have caused some major disruption mm. okay if we talk about your placement year where was it how long was it and how was it so my placement year was in southampton i worked for norwegian cruise line for just over a year um, I found the placement on Bournemouth University's uh, careers platform, uh, My Career Hub. Um, it was really easy to find. It was just being advertised. Uh, and then I got in touch, sent my cover letter, my CV, and I, I had an assessment day in, um, in Southampton. And just a few days later, I was offered the job. Uh, which was, I think that was back in April or March. So it was, I was still in my studies uh, in my second year. And then I started straight after my very last exam, actually. So I started in, in June and worked until the end of June next year. Um, it was very tough, I must say. Um, you go into a job that you've never done in your life before. And um, you have to use all the knowledge that you've you've gained from the, the beginning of your week. course. Um, the training um, might not necessarily be as sufficient as you wish, okay. but that is the point of doing a placement, I think, to get you um, working independently and finding out things that you need for your own personal development. And then... Um, everything else kind of builds up. But in general, I must say the first half of my placement was very, very hard. I kept my um, probation, I kept getting extended actually. <laughs> um, but eventually after coming back after the Christmas break, I was much more relaxed and confident about what I, what I knew and how I would go about doing things and then ended up actually getting offered an extension to my contract. What advice should you give to students who are looking to start their placement or do their placement in? Start, or start your research early on. Um, never compare yourself to the progress of your friends, even people that you don't know, because everyone's in a different stage in their life. Everyone wants different things in life. Maybe it would be nice if you want to get some ideas for your own placement search um, but don't stress um, do it at your own pace even if that means you find the placement in the very last minute don't give up and I would suggest them uh, to students to if they even find a short placement start with a short placement you can even find something something else later on or you can even get extended if you if you like your placement but uh, it's definitely um, very worth worthwhile experience throughout your degree that you should definitely take uh, as I'm sure it will help even if that's not what you want to do later on when you graduate. Okay so if we now go into your university so you studied at Bournemouth University and currently studying at York University. Yeah. Can you tell us the best and worst things about studying at Bournemouth University starting off with the worst? Um, hmm. 
That's a hard one. I mean, the, the worst things are the, the, the hard bit <laughs> because I must say I have a soft spot for Bournemouth Uni. I've done a lot. Um, for what, sorry? I have a soft spot for Bournemouth University. <laughs> okay. Um, I've done a lot there. I've, I've been supported a lot every time I've, I've had any struggles. Um, I think they've been very good at, at supporting and it's just having you know speaking out about what concerns you have uh, I feel like um, I've been heard at least myself personally but also observing how they deal the students union as well as the university as a as a higher education body Mm. um, they tackle problems very well I think Um, University of York um, I was going to say you you didn't say anything bad you just said it all good so is that, uh, is that I'll come back to that okay yeah. that's all right that's all right like, just making make sure a, yes, like a comparison that's all right um, the good thing as well about York is that actually even though there's not too many students more than um they have just about the same amount uh, same number of students that Bournemouth Uni has okay um they have they've actually separated um undergrads from master's students so Whereas there's a, uh, only one students' union in Bournemouth Uni, York Uni has a students' union for the whole uni, as well as a separate one for um, just postgraduate students, which is actually really nice because you have a more personalised um, mm. way of reaching out. And it's your people on your course. Sorry? Is that piece or the master students, so you're not mixing too. So yes, you can relate to each other. students as well. Yes, absolutely, yeah. Then when it comes to the worst thing, I guess one thing that really strikes out is accommodation issues. Is this York or Bournemouth? Both. Okay. Um, other than that... Could you uh, expand what you mean? What, what, what is accommodation issues? Yeah, I could. Um, both university ha- uh, universities have the designated team that looks after students who uh, want to live on campus or okay. in student halls. Um, the difference is that U- University of York has a more, it's called like a college system. So okay. instead of, um, uh, let's say we've got Perbic House in Bournemouth University, uh, they have colleges on okay. campus. Um, and most of, I think they, they are, um, run by the university, but it's just the whole organization of how students have been moving in and the support that they've been getting or that they've been asked to just, um, it's kind of like, I, I've heard people say that they feel like they, they're getting almost, feel like they're almost getting deprived from some of their civil rights um, in the sense that, especially during the pandemic, they, they feel a bit trapped so there hasn't been much support mental health support for those who live in accommodation Um, for Bournemouth Uni I think that kind of stepped in later on with the help from Res Life and also the welfare um, coordinators I'm not sure if that's the right uh, name of their the role Mm -hmm. but um, I think the financial support in both universities um, is kind of lacking. A lot of students face this big challenge um, coming to university and having to scrape kind of up everything they've got to, to pay. Yeah. Okay. If we're going on to your accommodation, where did you live in your first year at Bournemouth? I lived in Perbeck House, actually. <laughs> what was it like at Perbeck House? Um... It had its reputation of being the loud place. However, I think that was in a good way um, uh, positive for students because it it was very easy to socialize. Um, They had their own little events going on at the time. Um, And I think it was really a really good place to start your, uh, your university journey, especially as a fresher. Um, you had your study room, you had your common room, there was a like a courtyard between the two blocks and um, for me it worked really well as a fresher. What kind of vibe is perfect? As you said it's loud, so if we had the spectrum of party to chill slash revising, 
what side would it be more on the party side or the chill or revising side? I think it's more the party side. And I, I don't want to make it sound like that's a bad thing because there is a balance. Of course, uh, you can't have a too loud party, I guess. Um, but there is the Res Life team uh, there, which consists of students who um, organize events for for every student in, in the accommodation. So there's a little bit of everything for everyone. It's not just partying. If we go into your second year, where did you live? In my second year, I decided to do what I guess most students would do and just live a, live in a house with your mates. So I lived with um, two other course mates and we, we shared a house. What was it like going from Purbeck to a house? Oh, wow. Um, the stress was big. And I was one of those students who actually ended up in that trap of uh, thinking I have to book a house for next year really, really early on. So we booked our house in January for uh, moving. We had to move in in August and no one actually informed of, uh, informed us of what steps we needed to take, whether we could get any accommodation support, um, even legal support, I guess, for some of the things that we had to do in terms of signing the contract, getting guarantors, because not all of us were um, British citizens. And um, I think as well, like sorting out utility bills, things like that, um, as a first, especially being an international student, it, it's, it's a new thing and um, you don't really get much support. So you, then you had your placement year. Yeah. And now you're in your master's. No, you would have had your final year. Yeah. Where do you live in your final year? Well, I during my placement year, actually, I found uh, that's when um, Res Life started to become bigger and I was really interested in working for them. So I, I applied, I was the first applicant actually, and they offered me instead of the, uh, as an assistant role, they offered me a leader role. Uh, and uh, I was really happy to accept, which meant that I had to live actually in halls. Mm -hmm. So um, I chose to live in Purbeck House again. Okay. And if we go now to your York Masters, where are you living? Um, I, I decided to live in, um, it's a student accommodation, but it's privately owned. Uh, so, yeah, I live in a student accommodation, which is in the, in the city centre. It's not really um, on either, camp, either of the campuses. Is it a, again, chill slash study or party house? To be honest, I wouldn't be able to really define, I guess maybe because of the circumstances, but it sounds like it's a more chilled um, place. Okay, so if we now go into the Bournemouth area, can you tell us about the Bournemouth nightlife pre-COVID? <laughs> uh, I've had some very good memories, I must say. Bournemouth is a really, really vibrant place and I think a perfect location for, for students especially. What was the um, club for you? Sorry? What was the club for you? Oh. <laughs> um, <a> cameo. <laughs> cameo I think Wednesdays? Had, um, yes, Cameo Wednesdays, definitely. And then I, actually my final year, ten, I, I was going sometimes during weekends as well. But it's just... Um, uh it had all the rooms that you need if you get bored of some any type of music mm. and anything else about the nightlife or is there a lot is there a little so it was vibrant so i'm guessing that means there's a lot um there is there are a lot of clubs yeah um but i guess that's the main thing to do i just uh, just clubbing and um, there's loads of takeaway places the okay. streets especially around the the halls are full of them so you've got plenty of choice for that if you go into the shops is it more local shops or more chain shops uh for myself for shopping you mean yeah so just this is general shopping um or is it a good mix it's a good mix i would say yeah okay yeah. and if we go into as you said the kind of restaurants is it more chain shops or more local shops um i was trying more local shops 
I think. Okay. And is there anything else you think a Bournemouth student who a student who'd want to study in Bournemouth needs to know about the area? Um, I think getting that bus pass is actually quite useful. I, I regret not not using it as much as I, I could because um, in York, for example, you only get access to just the university buses. Um, but in, in Bournemouth, I think the, the bus pass can be used for some of the more buses as well. Mm -hmm. And you can, you can actually go to some really interesting places around Bournemouth as well. So um, there's a lot to see and do. And um, even though Bournemouth is a small town, and yes, there's, there's things that could be improved um, apart from just having to offer clubbing to students, um, I think there's there's a lot more that students can can do and see. If we go now to the York area, mm -hmm. what is the York nightlife like pre-COVID? Um, I've heard it's good. <laughs> I haven't experienced it myself because I I just moved in September uh, this September, so I I don't really have much experience. Of, for that but as far, as far as I know there's not so many clubs there and um, all the clubs are mainly situated in in the city centre mm -hmm. but it's a great vibe because um, York is kind of like a, a mixture of students as well as young professionals okay so it has a good vibe um, there's more contemporary places and cafes and mm -hmm. bars that you can chill not just um um clubs Night clubs so i was yeah. going to say so as same question for bournemouth what is the sh shops more chain or local um i think there's more chains yeah okay. and restaurants um yeah there, there's definitely more chains like now especially is good they, that they have chains like nando's a big student favorite mm. um and I think that's that's what attracts students the most. They don't think about how much money they would spend on the meal, even though it's it might expensive. be very expensive. But the fact that it's Nando's, it's Nando's. eliminates all the <laughs> other options. And is there anything else you think is almost uh, York? Students who want to study in York would need to know about the area. Um, yes, I think there's one thing that they can definitely improve um for students just coming new students coming to, to university of york something that actually bournemouth did quite well when i joined was that they held workshops for new students especially international students mm. um introducing them to to the uk culture um as well as i remember very well there was a workshop on what kind of shops you can shop in um kind of like putting a benchmark on mm. how much things cost. Like a, so like a an, walkthrough in a way. Yeah, yeah. It gives you an idea of, of where you can go shopping, how expensive it is. And in York, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say they they prepare you that well um, for that. And many students just go to their local shops wherever they, 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 they might be. Um, and it, it could be quite expensive. So be uh, my advice to students coming to York would be be wary of that. Make, maybe ask people, um, watch some vlogs, student blogs as well, and okay. that help, will help them. What general advice would you give to students about to study at university? Sorry, can you repeat that again? What general advice would you give to students about to study at university? Well, go for it. I mean, it's become very controversial now about how helpful it would actually be with your career in the future. But I think it's a great experience um, socially as well as professionally. Um, it would prepare you uh, for life after university with a lot of um, building up on a lot of your interpersonal skills, which are incredibly important for any job these days. Um, but if there's something in specific that you're interested in, like maybe you want to do arts or, or finances or architecture, just just go and do that. Um, don't go and do something completely different because you you might, chances are you might regret it and not like it, even though you could always change it. So 
Um, I, I would say there's it's never a time wasted. You can always you can always um, take something from it. What advice would you give to students about to study at Bournemouth University? Oh wow, there's uh, so many things that you can get involved in, um, and I was quite um, impressed and a little bit overwhelmed. But as as long as you make a plan of things that you like and maybe want to research a bit more and to help you get yourself involved in all these activities I think it's a good way of a good approach to joining any university like check what sports they have what social clubs and activities events as well volunteering um, get involved in as much as you can what advice would you give to students about to study at York University um do open days definitely um especially the virtual open days help because you can keep um the recording i mean the the chat that you uh have or even if you haven't joined on the day you can go back to the chats and see what people have been asking or you can get in touch directly with academics as well and finally what advice would you give to students about to study your course at university university of york you uh <laughs> let's say both universities so your undergrad and your both postgrads um i think before going into either of the courses make sure you kind of get a general idea of what's what's involved in the course what kind of modules you'll be studying um and watch watch the news um watch youtube um Check some of the relevant, um, I don't know, some of the relevant information that's even being shown on, on Instagram because there's so much um, being advertised about things that you don't even realize that you will be studying. So all of these things will really help with your, um, with your course. And it's not, it's not just the dry theory. Okay. You chose studying the, in the UK over studying Bulgaria. What path do you to make this choice? <laughs> don't want to make it sound like it's really bad here but I think it's the quality of the education um, the fact that it's so well organized and managed in the UK has always been a dream of mine to, to come here okay at this point I have what I let students have what I like to call a free-for-all you can say what you like about what you want you can give advice you can say something smart you can say something dumb you can put your ads literally the floor is yours oh wow <laughs> um I think I'm going to use one example of something that I did that I thought at the time was quite crazy. Um, maybe not so much, but it's just to give an example to other students or prospective students um, to not be scared about trying new things. Um, I remember when I was in my first year, I was literally, I was a week in to my degree and um, I had been researching about this um, uh, performing Arts Society at Bournemouth Uni and I, I had no clue about what this meant. Um, I knew that I want, always wanted to, to take up acting or something like that but I never had any experience in it so when I came I knew that there were um, being uh, auditions being held and the next day after the auditions I was supposed to travel with my course on a field trip so I packed my suitcase. I was ready to go to my friend's house to get ready for the next day for traveling. And on the way, I was actually on the bus and I, I thought to myself, do you know what? I'm actually going to go to the auditions. It's the last day, so I'm just going to turn up mm -hmm. and do my thing completely unprepared. Um, and I just walked in with my suitcase and they thought I was going to be the main actress for some reason. And I said, actually, no, I just came to audition for any role and uh, they gave me a piece of song and um, some script to read out. And I just, I was just being myself. I had a laugh and I got the role in the musical. So it was a, something completely new, completely out of my comfort zone that I did. Um, but it just goes to show that if you, if you are who you are, if you present yourself um, and be confident about who you are as a person. I know it might sound intimidating, especially before you join university, but there's, it, it, will, 
it will make a massive difference to you as well as to other people because you will just bounce off each other and um, it just creates a, a great way to communicate with people, I guess. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'm plugged in. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you.